This is the wild and windswept southern coast of Western Australia. It's a beautiful but unforgiving part of the world and certainly not a place you'd want to become lost or marooned. So how will the members of a city real estate agency cope when they're left out here all alone facing a situation that's do or die? These six city slicker office workers with some hidden problems are about to discover the true meaning of teamwork in a test of outback survival. They'll be led by top corporate psychologist, Dr. Travis Kemp, who believes in the experiential power of putting people under extreme pressure in the wilderness. I've got a really strong belief that people can absolutely change. For goodness sake, talk about trauma queen. These experiences are a lot about people's behavior. You don't want to do it. Michael, change your ways yourself. They're thinking. Calm Christy. down. Christy, Christy. listen. Hey, right? Hey. No, listen. And the emotions that they feel when they're out in these wilderness environments. It's a snake infested pit. You need to start thinking differently because you're kidding yourself. When they've got those three things working for them, they're absolutely going to be successful in that change. But can Dr Kemp solve the problems of a whole workplace? To find out, he's about to turn just another day at the office into a battle for survival. Porter Matthews Real Estate, Perth. Its business is managing rentals and selling houses. We want them to um, be interested in your property. Meet the boss. My name is Ray Grogan. I'm the principal licensee of Porter Matthews Victoria Park. I think that people are the, the key to having a, a good office and a successful office. This is Ray's wife, Lita. I'm a full business partner with Ray in the business and we've worked together for 25 years. I look after the property management department. We are dealing with thousands of people with different issues. So we really are under the pump. So I like to be more flexible, not so rigid. But some people in the office are really rigid. So that can cause some conflict. So Ray's wife, Lita, is also a boss. Then there's Michael, another boss. I'm the partner, principal, licensee with Ray Grogan in the office. So we're um, on a 50-50 basis. I think people give me business because they trust me and trust in real estate is huge. So I'm true to my word. 22-year-old Christy is Ray and Lita's daughter. She's only been with Porter Matthews for six months. But guess what? She wants to be the boss too. I want to achieve a lot both financially and what I want from my life. My overall goal is to eventually run the company. Christy's line manager is Amy. She knows where she sits in the pecking order. For now, anyway. I'm the team leader for the department. Basically, it's Lita and myself who ensure that the department is run smoothly. And then we have Tamika and Christy who are assistants. Basically, we delegate the work to them. So there's plenty of chiefs. But what about the Indians? Hello, this is Tamika speaking. Where's the toilet located? The ensuite. OK. I am the personal assistant for the property management department in the office. And is it just continually leaking? Oh, it's blocked. I'm a bit of a pushover, so, you know, someone says, no, you're wrong, Tamika. I'm like, OK, I'm wrong. <laughs> Porter Matthews Real Estate. <laughs> Five dominant personalities, one pushover, and an explosive secret. Yeah, I think Christy certainly could be sitting uh, in my chair one day, and uh, that uh, within my side of the business is a succession plan. That all said, I haven't discussed this with my business partner, Michael. Sometimes uh, silence is the best way uh, to deal with things. You know, less said, sooner mended. Keen to improve teamwork, but without ruffling any feathers, Ray has signed his business up for a week in the wilderness. Little does he know, they are headed for the deep end and a rendezvous with Dr Travis Kemp. In the beginning, this journey will feel like any other corporate team building exercise. By the end, they will have been pushed to their limits in a gruelling survival scenario none of them are prepared for. I don't like the bush. I don't like creepy crawlies, snakes, none of that. I don't like the dark. 
<laughs> Lots of things. <laughs> it might go against their natural instincts, but these real estate agents are going to have to trust each other totally. But if we can all come together and understand one another's strengths, and weaknesses in other fields, that is something that we can work on within the business. Having driven for hours, they have no idea where they are or where they're going next. They are now near the wild, isolated southern coast of Western Australia, and what they face will ultimately become do or die. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> My name is Dr. Travis Kemp. There'll be many things that pop up over the next five days. There'll be challenges that you need to face. There'll be risks that you need to front. And your success will rely on how you work together as a group, how you support each other, and how you collectively move towards your goal. But I guess the first thing that I'm seeing and I'm looking at is that we probably need to make a bit of a change in terms of what we're wearing. So how about we um, get into some clothes that are really going to help us on this adventure rather than get in our way? OK, let's do that. <laughs> now Travis presents their first challenge, one that could make all the difference in their struggle to survive. What you have in front of you is a selection of gear which is open to you and available to you because whatever you decide to take with you, two things. One is it has to fit on your kayak over there because you'll be paddling with it. And secondly, it has to provide a function that is going to help you to keep you warm, safe and heading in the right direction. Guys, you might like to know that you've got about 48 hours worth of food here, and then at that point we'll need to restock. Okay. One tarpaulin full of useful stuff, six mature and yeah. intelligent right, adults, exactly. and about right, half an hour to work it all out. Okay. How hard can that be? So, we've got to get a baggie, so that, that's okay. So the bag, get your clothes in there, get as much um, kind of warmish stuff that you can get in there. Mm -hmm. So are we we're going to set yeah. these bags up with our clothes, what we're taking for the yeah, next five so, days. Yeah. I've never camped before, guys. And I don't like care ever. what no one says, but if you roll your clothes, they pack a lot easier. Really? The clock is ticking, but they're not looking at or even oh, yeah. thinking about what they might need to survive if something goes wrong. Instead, they're worrying more about what to wear and their comforts from home. Personal and moral support. <laughs> In these sorts of environments, it's really important to consider the, the things that you need primarily first and then worry about everything else second. So obviously they need water, they need shelter and they need food, probably in that order. I think they're in deep trouble. With just a few minutes to go before their time is up, they're finally starting to think about food. No, it's shared all out, so we've got to be together anyway. Shall we take all this? We don't even know what it is. All in. We have to survive for over two days. We stand with it. Food. Think food. But still, survival is playing second fiddle to taste. I hate nuts. Mushroom risotto. Ew. Beef teriyak. They sound disgusting. So. I think if we need to take this spaghetti. If there's something you don't like or can't eat, obviously you won't take it. Eventually, it's Tamika, the office dog's body, who begins to think more clearly about what is most important. Is it a compass? Confused about how we're yeah. supposed to do Do we need that? <laughs> I don't know, do we? Yeah, yeah. Can you bring another can? Do we need this? Yeah, compass. We need to have a look at what. Probably not, no. Definitely need them. Shall I take a survival kit? <laughs> but seriously, that's a serious question. What's your bag? Tameka. Travis now begins his work by pushing buttons and probing behaviour. He just had a fantastic suggestion. Everyone listen here, you right? Because yeah. it's a very good idea to take yeah. that. But no one seemed to listen. No. Does that happen very often? Um, <laughs> yeah, possibly. Yeah. Right, I'm going to drag it down, eh? <laughs> All right, folks, the shop is now closed. Anything left on the tarp stays on the tarp. 
when groups sometimes come out into the wilderness, they do exactly the same things as they did when they were back in the workplace. And the same is holding true for Porter Matthews here. There's a hierarchy in the group, so some people are lower on that hierarchy and others are higher. They get listened to more often than the others. I'm taking my towel. All right, well then, the rest of the room's for my clothes. You can't put any clothes in there. No worries. Christy wants to keep her towel dry just in case she gets wet. Um, She can dry herself off, whereas I think that we should put clothes in there because if our clothes get wet, we can put dry clothes on and get dry. So... But um, then your dry clothes and your get towel, wet because you're wet. But, and your towel's huge. You could probably fit, like, a jumper, some trackies. There um, is enough room in there to sink a battleship. But, yeah, so... Deciding what to take is one thing, but now they need to pack it all into the kayaks. They're meant to be out on the river, heading for their first destination before nightfall. But they're running out of time, and the weather is closing in. However, it's not the elements that are worrying Travis. Oh, you're drinking. It's the people at Porter Matthews. I can guarantee you that if I let you paddle this out on the water at the moment, you'd last about 10 minutes before you'd either capsize it or you'd lose your sleeping bags and you'd get hypothermic when we eventually got to the bank and slept overnight because you've got no shelter. So what I want to do is slow this process down. I've made a decision that we're going to stay here tonight and we're going to go through this process in the morning in a little bit more purposeful way and have a chat tonight about how we can do that much more efficiently. So what I'd like you to do is to set yourself up in whichever area you like around here tonight so that preferably you're dry, that you stay dry and that you can keep warm for most of the night. Do that first and then we'll look at eating. So go for it guys, it's up to you. 30 minutes of light left and then it goes completely dark. In the office, poor communication and dire decision making can be bad for business. Out here, it can be dangerous. So if we were to um, put in place two or three key agreements, perhaps, for tomorrow about how you were going to work together and how you were going to solve problems together, would that help? Definitely. In the business world, you don't go into a meeting without a chairperson. You don't go into a project without a team leader. Having someone accountable to make sure everyone works as a team would be important, okay. maybe. What do other people think about that? So bring it back to how you want to be working with each other, because that's what the agreements are about here. How do you want to be working with each other? How do you want to be treating each other? How do you want to be interacting with each other? Patience and respect mm. and listening to one another, I okay. guess. Yeah. So patience, respect, listen to each other. All right, they're three biggies. Shall we give it a crack, Ray? Do you want to lead the first leg of the paddle tomorrow? Um, what I'd uh, like to do is, um, yeah, I'll, I'll lead the first leg of the okay. paddle. Yeah. Any idea for how long? Uh, probably most of the day, I would say. Oh, OK, mm. all right. The real estate agents have given their word. But tomorrow, when the real challenges begin, their promises will be sorely tested. Biggest challenge for them today is to see themselves as a team. At the moment, they're split into little groups. They're gonna be two people in each kayak. It's a long day of paddling. It's gonna be tough conditions. They need each other and they need to support each other. Three of us. Thank you. They also need to stay alert. Hey, Travis is about to give them information that, here. if remembered, will be the key to their salvation. The most important thing to remember is that if you get lost or if we're separated, the safest thing for you guys to do is make your way towards the mouth of the inlet, where the inlet meets the sea. Close to that inlet is a survival hut and in that hut, there's provisions, there's advice on how to survive, and there's the things that you'll need to be okay. So remember that. Travis deliberately keeps the real estate agents in the dark about precisely where they're going and why. Dealing with uncertainty is part of the challenge. Basically, they're at the top of a large and treacherous inlet, subject to extreme winds and hidden currents. Over the next five days, 
they'll be forced to paddle, swim and scramble its length and breadth. After yesterday's poor showing, hopefully office boss Ray will deliver some leadership and focus. They'll need it. Porter Matthews is about to learn that what starts out as a leisurely paddle in a tranquil backwater is going to turn into something completely different. The immediate target is the island straight ahead. Here, they'll camp the night before pushing further downstream. But with the weather and wind changing, conditions are turning rough. After three solid hours of paddling, the group is beginning to tire. We need to go at the same time. No, you need to keep in time with me. Tamika and Michael are falling dangerously behind. Ray, leader for today, makes a ruthless executive decision. They know what they've got to do. We can't help them. Don't want to get drifted back, but it's too hard to work. Tamika and Michael are at least 400 metres behind. <laughs> no, I can see it down here, it'll be alright. Thanks, mate. Yeah, you guys left us. Sorry. Travis said that you guys should have waited for us. The approach to the crossing has been shambolic and has exposed some core tension at Porter Matthews. Because we were struggling like hell out there. That's we, all. Are, well, we, we all were. I wanted to turn off our life to end, for goodness sake, we at stopped. one point. <laughs> and we waited. And... Every man for himself. Is that the way it was? Not no, necessarily. We were there cheering them. We were there cheering them on keep in. Going, we acted going. under your instructions. Right, hang on, hang on. Wait, 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 wait. So keep going means don't look after everybody. Is that right? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm not saying that at all, um, because we knew that they were very capable of coming through. I checked on several occasions, and they were within um, 100 metres, and they were still going okay. If they had wanted my help, I know with Tamika and Michael, they would have called out. And, so uh, could you have heard them, Ray, from 400 metres behind? Because it wasn't 100 metres, I'll give you the strong tip. Uh, no, I, I couldn't have done, no. no. Okay. So one of the core responsibilities of any leader is to look after the team that he or she is leading. That means being aware of them, being uh, understanding of how they're travelling and how well they're feeling and everything that goes along with making sure that their performance is the best that it can possibly be. Ray was in no position to make any judgement about that whatsoever because he was just so far in front of the other two boats. It was just poor leadership. But in this family-dominated business, Ray still has the support from the apple of his eye. I can be very honest, at the end of the day, it's the two people in the canoe who've got to be able to work together to get there. If that's the case, Christy, then it's every man for himself. That's the definition of every man for himself. Every boat? Right? Every team for themselves. Well, I thought that you were one team last time we spoke. Isn't there six people at Porter Matthews? Yeah, Or have we you suddenly are. split so companies now? I don't uh, understand what you're saying. Actually, Tameka, we're how do you feel about What do you mean? But what are you saying? No, 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 I don't no, care no, what you're getting second. at. I haven't heard from Tamika, and Tamika has probably something that she wants to contribute. Um, I think we did really well, but from the point of view that I'm looking at is if we had capsized, um, we would have needed help back into the canoe. And from what I'm gathering is you guys are the ones that would have had to help us back in. Yeah. So if that would have happened and we were out where we were, that would have taken you guys at least 10, 15 minutes to get back where we were. So I'll come back to the agreements that you made with each other. Support each other, listen to each other, help each other out. How did you do with those? I think we supported each other. Yeah, I absolutely. I thought so. I'm... All right, here's the clincher, guys. You need to start thinking differently and you need to change the way that you're behaving because you're kidding yourself right at the moment. There is no truth talk in this group at all. None whatsoever. And if you want to continue with that, that's fine. But continue with it and you're going to keep getting the same results as you've got up until this point. So if I was you right now, I would take a long, hard, reflective time and think about what just happened. And think about what would have happened if two boats were upside down out there now. Because I can guarantee you there'd be people floating face down in the water 
500 meters down that way. Because it's not on. <laughs> Three Hail Marys for our fathers and um, <laughs> it'll all be better. Mistakes happen, and he is right. If we had a went tip over, we would have been in big trouble. No, you wouldn't have. <laughs> how far away were you? Out, for? I, for goodness sake, how far away were you? I would have gone out and swam after you. You would not have been in big trouble. Talk about drama queens. I think it's not It's not just us falling over. It's actually the... Maybe would you have got out and swam after them? How far away? How many times <laughs> no. did we check? <laughs> hey, but how many times yeah. did we check? <laughs> how many times did we check? Do you know oh, what I mean? Like, I'm how many times do you have I'm to laughing. check? <laughs> But we, all, we almost agree, we almost put our hand up here and agree that it could have been just done that slightly better. Oh, absolutely, Do but agree? I don't know if the attitude well, I'm, I'm, from... Yeah, definitely. And that's, and that's yeah. the end result. Yeah. We all have learned it, yeah. all learned yeah. by it, which is great. We can all, that's what we're all here for, to yeah. learn and help yeah. each other in, in, in every possible way. Oh yeah, you're getting shivery. While Christy storms off in a half, Michael, half owner of the company, is not impressed. You know, I am her boss and sometimes I'm not treated like that in any way. I'm just treated as just another person in the office. It's now late afternoon. Absolutely. Travis figures everybody's pretty well had enough for one day. Okie dokie, we all here? Yep. All right, uh, before we get... Six, yeah. Six, yep. Before we get too cold, we're gonna stay here tonight. There's a couple of really nice camping spots just up in through the trees that I'll take you in and show you in a second, um, so I can get warm. And um, after that paddle, you probably need a break as well. So, sound okay? Yeah, sounds great. All right, let's go. Keep warm, eh? Whatever yep. we call this, yeah, home. Yeah, this is great. This is good, yeah. Yeah. That's all. Who's the longest bit of roll? hasn't been a good start for the city slicker real estate agents. They're already tired, stressed, and hobbled by indecision and poor communication. There's still no sign of any real leadership or team spirit. There's also no sign of the kayaks. So the kayaks are gone. Porter Matthews was starting to become reliant on my decision making in the first couple of days we spent together. So I figured that I would take me out of the equation and force them to really work together as a team to make their decisions and solve problems themselves. The other factor that I'm concerned about is their initiative and their lateral thinking. And so I've taken away their transport and they're gonna to have to really start to think very creatively about how they're gonna get themselves off the island. Knowing full well the group is disorientated with little food or water, Travis has triggered a survival scenario. Well, crew, there's no kayaks down there. Seriously? They've all gone. All the gear's gone. Is yours? Yep. He didn't say to take everything out of the boats, and all of our clothes and uh, dry and stuff's water. in the boats, and our water's in the boats. Are you lying, Ray? Right? No. Oh, crap. No. no. Why are you pulling that boat? <laughs> You're lying! <laughs> Trust me, I'm a real estate salesman. <laughs> <laughs> Water. That's right. Water. That's what we want. Well, I said, what about the water? All the water's oh. in the boats. You go, well, the boats have gone. Mm -hmm. Stress less. We're not going to die. What are you taking everything down for? Don't take anything down. We could be here tonight. No one said we're, we're, we're packing up and leaving yet. Yes. Save your energy until we know we have to do it. Back here. Only do what you have Never to know. do. So what I've left them with is a lot of thinking time. The thinking time is about how they're going to get themselves off this island. Three hours later, there's still no sign of Travis. What are we doing today? Maybe we're just staying here all day. <laughs> hey, Christy. <laughs> You've been in your pyjamas for two <laughs> days. When are you going to be out? She doesn't even know where she is. The big question is, where's 
Travis. And what's the next move? They could, I guess, sit around and wait for me to come back and do nothing. I'm really hoping, though, that they will start thinking as a group, start solving some problems as a group, start working out a way of getting off the island without me having to provide the hint. But just because you've been abandoned, it doesn't necessarily mean you're alone. I'm seeing a snake. Its head is not visible. It's under the rock, which means I don't know exactly how long it is. It's not brown, so that's good. I know if a snake's not brown, that's a good thing, generally speaking. But I think it's probably best I don't tell Tamika or Amy about it, or Lita. Sometimes what you don't know can't hurt you. Oh, it's moving. I said I don't do snakes that move, so I'm just going to take a step back now, away from that rock. And we can go that way. Ray has also had some close encounters. Oh, okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Case closed. Mm. Thank you for that. <sighs> the snakes are closing in. And it looks like Travis isn't coming back. I've just gone earlier today through the food bins. So there's not a lot of food. There's enough food for us to survive till tomorrow. Um, I, I feel that I'm comfortable with the amount of food we've got to survive, but it's the water. I'm really concerned about the water because I've gone without in my life and I know what it's like to go without and everything that's been provided for these kids on a platter. And we have mollycoddled these kids, this particular generation, and they've got absolutely no idea of what it's like to actually really go without and be out of their comfort zone. The game's changed. We need to be thinking three days and looking after one another and where we're going to get some water. And so whether they actually choose to listen when I go back and, and, and we talk will be interesting. Okay, I want everyone to listen to me and listen really, and I mean listen. There are six people here and there is one bottle of fresh water. I bought five bottles of water up here this morning and everyone has gulped it down because in 48 hours we're going to be restocked. They've changed the game. I think it is a very serious situation that we're in and we need to address where we're going to get the water and also the food. And you can roll your eyes as much as you like because we may just be here for the next three days with what we've got. I'm just saying that I don't think there's any point stressing and I don't know if you realise, but you're coming, you're stressing me out. This is my way of asking you to please not be so serious about the situation. Let's take it as a bit more fun because I agree this is with what's going to happen. Here, so now what I want to just I say. I you should just stay out of it and just, no, this is no. my top. You, uh, Later. I, calm Christy. down. Christy, yeah. Christy. listen. Hey, right? Later, no, you. listen for a change. Stop, listen, don't tell me to listen, calm listen, down listen, listen, and listen to what I am saying. Listen. I have just come to a situation. I am here too. It's about me. It's not just about you telling me. I feel that we should take this situation a little bit more seriously and not so blasé. Well, and I you'll think, be I okay because I, we, well, I will look after you, Tamika. I'm sorry that I. Oh, yeah, this is not about see, that. This, my <laughs> goodness, I, I see what you you're saying. You don't get it, though. Christy. Both parties are right. Yeah, you're correct, and Christy's correct. We move forward from here to um, work on the basis that, yeah, we haven't seen Travis, we have no direction from anyone, we were given basic implements and tools and food, so we will work from there, and unless we're told otherwise... So, so, well, so can we, we all agree that the food, please, is, is rationed? When we eat, we only eat together, and it's minimal to make it last as long as we possibly can. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, absolutely. No I agree. No OK, yeah. thanks for that. I agree. But it's, it's not potential not starvation that has Tamika in tears. Somehow, she has got wind of the other lurking threat. You're not me. freaking out about the food or the water. You worry about, about, about the snakes. I can't even deal. Like, I'm freaking out. <laughs> <laughs> Breathe it in. One, two, three. Lower chest. One, two, three. Breathe it in. Just, just stay with me. 
Mother and daughter may well have let off some steam, but Porter Matthews still hasn't realised the situation they're in or how to get out of it. No, not now. That's it's nearly midday, and the only thing they can agree on is that a swim might be nice. It's funny because this morning I said, just this morning I said to Lita, um, I feel so comfortable here. So I said, if I had to be in the outback, it would be here because we've got Travis and we've got, you know, safety. Um, so once Travis was taken away, I guess, I don't know, um, that's when we all freaked out. It's about now that their survival instincts should be kicking in. And the information Travis gave them at the beginning should be ringing in their ears. So before we started paddling on day two, I gave Porter Matthews a critical piece of information. I said to them that if they were to become lost or separated at all, that they should make their way to where the inlet meets the ocean. And when they got there, they would find a fisherman's hut. That fisherman's hut would be stocked with supplies, information that they would need, and some safety equipment that would get them rescued. By early afternoon, Lita is starting to piece it all together. So if you got lost, <laughs> You would head to the river mouth or the ocean? The river mouth, the river same mouth difference. Was same sense. Is that? It? Yeah, well, the ocean is where the river mouth is. What's the river mouth? It's where, where the, the ocean, ocean, ocean meets the river. Or oh. vice versa. And I said, well, if I need is to go to the something? river mouth, which direction would I go? Mum, shush, Christy, for a few minutes, please. <laughs> What did I do wrong? Nothing, I just asked you to shush for a few minutes. Well, I was just gonna ask you to put sun cream on me, so too bad. <sighs> Clearly, Christy and Mum have not quite finished their battle of wills, and their colleagues, as they do back at work, must deal with the fallout. I don't get it. I always get told to shut my mouth. She's the one who's wanting to take it's this whole easy. thing so seriously, like, but it's, it's, you know, where's the safe house, blah, blah, blah. Like, fucking hell. Who cares what the safe house is? So, you know, what the fuck do you do? Nothing. Emotions are running high, but for Amy, it's just another day in the office. Everything's kind of coming to the surface and, I mean, in our group there's there's so many strong personalities. Um, sometimes I think there's probably too many chiefs and not enough Indians. <laughs> and um, it is it is hard to get a word in edgewise sometimes when you do have such big personalities coming out. So, um, yeah, I just... Like, I'll only say something when I feel it's really necessary to, to kind of speak up, I guess. It's now late afternoon, and as time slips away, so does their food and water. There's been rows, tantrums and tears, but no real progress towards getting off Snake Island. I don't know how I'm going to sleep tonight. I don't think snakes come out at night, don't they? No. The snakes come out at night, right? No. They're basically scared of us, and the only reason they'll lash out and bite is if you um, go and try and kill them or something like that, and we're not going to do that. They sit and wait for divine inspiration. Mm. They're stuck. They're not going anywhere. They're not thinking creatively. They're not thinking laterally. And I need to unfreeze that a little bit. So I, I've given them a little bit of a hand and I've floated a couple of paddles out into the water with an eye shot of them, and hopefully they're going to pick that up and see it as a bit of a hint to think about building something or finding something to paddle themselves off this island. Well, we can grab the They weren't there before. Let's go. If the paddles are drifting, perhaps the kayaks might also be nearby. <laughs> That's treacherous. And how are we supposed to get across to some survival thing? We've got paddles. We haven't got any boats. It's either an upturned 
boat or the kayaks out there on that rocky outcrop. But the conditions are now too rough to take a closer look. We actually need to get back to camp and regroup with everybody and then we'll discuss what we've found. What, what is it? Michael will swim across to that first thing tomorrow morning. We can be here as a group and we can decide, but we just don't know what is on that island. Yeah, we don't. No, we don't. Marooned on a snake-infested island, the real estate agents from Porter Matthews are grabbing the bull by the horns. Travis or no Travis, they're taking the initiative and they're out of here. The plan is to go to the point where we believe that, uh, we believe that we should be able to get off of the island and um, our goal is to get to a fisherman's shack we believe that is somewhere off the coast. We've got no idea where, to be honest. Um, we just don't know where we're going. We just know we've just got to get off of this snake infested island and we're going and we're getting out of here. So it's full steam ahead, but which way? We need to know where the north, east and west is. That's the most important That's thing for east. us to know today. Well, there's the east where the sun just came up from. Right? Yes. That's north and that's south. So as we are right now, that's, what, that's where it is. Now we have to figure out where the mouth of the river is. It's as simple as that. The mouth of the river is out there. It has to be. If, if anyone had a logical argument... Once again, the decision-making is a bit of a free-for-all. Ray said, I think we're more... Ray, would you agree that we're more kind of west to north? It's the rest of it. future it's boss, 22-year-old Christy, is happy to take the driver's seat. You can't go by yourself. I'm doing it. Go for Watch your life me. then by yourself, son. You want to be a hero by yourself, no, you'll be a hero. Of that. Seriously, I can never, ever win. You can't win by doing that. Oh, well, you're not getting anywhere with that conversation. We need to get someone with no, Michael, I, I agree. We said yesterday that two people might go out there, OK? Oh, you and I can discuss this forever, mm. all right? My whole opinion is that it's out there. If you can change my mind through knowledge yeah. and everything, I'll listen. But By arguing with Christy and Ray, yeah. Michael has put himself in the line of fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah I saw him. Yeah. No, I saw him. Well, you'd think yeah. there's two more. Porter Matthews' business problems just got personal. As much as I love Michael as a human being, throughout this whole scenario, Michael just does what Michael wants, when Michael wants, how Michael wants, and he's got no regard for anyone else's opinion. Everyone has made sacrifices and bitten their tongue on this trip, but he just isn't. I have to be very, very careful. Mum, Dad, daughter. Where's the third one? The balance is out a little bit in my head, and I find it a little bit hard to cross the line because she is the daughter of my, my business partner. We are now getting to the heart of what's really wrong with Porter Matthews. So Michael's position is, is really tough in a lot of ways. And even Amy and Tamika, in a funny kind of way, are like surrogate daughters to Ray and Lita. Michael doesn't fit that category. He's a business partner. He's not a part of the family. Both Christy and Michael successfully retrieved the kayaks. But there's only one person getting all the praise. Hello. Hello, young lady. <laughs> Champion girl. There's, a, there's three, so. There's three? Yeah. Cold. <laughs> you good there? Oh, yeah, if I get up, my rolls. It's a dynamic that Michael is only now coming to understand. Um, towel in my bag. I've seen her, how she reacts around her mother and father a lot now, seeing that we've been in a close environment and how she relies on them a lot. <laughs> He can see that Ray and Lita may have hidden plans for their daughter's takeover of the business. I would have to look at that myself. In the future, it will be an interesting scenario within the next, to me, three to five to ten years because Ray is getting 
He's not getting any younger. None of us are getting younger. But he will be hitting retirement before I'll be hitting retirement. Michael is the potential spanner in the works of the Grogan succession plan. Perhaps that's why it's becoming open season on anything to do with him, no matter how small. I just think it's Michael who's really not good at kayaking. <laughs> It's true. He doesn't listen. He'll only ever listen to Dad because Dad will just... He'll tell him straight. At the end of the day, he's the business partner and um, Michael doesn't care about us. Okay, so you're going with Michael, right? Am I? Yep. The two boys? Yep. OK, and we can bring up the rear yep. and make sure you're um, safe and well. We'll look after you. Finally, they are off Snake Island but they now face an exhausting and confusing search for the fisherman's heart. Is that an inlet in there? Where are we going? I think that's the mouth of the river. Guys, I think the shack's over there. The team has taken on board the lessons of the first kayaking trip, sticking closer together and watching out for each other. Hey, did you want to go out through there or to that white beach? Back down here. Okay, let's go. I can see the beach. That's right there. That's within our reach. Let's go. Look up here. It's here. After two hours of solid paddling, it's destination ahoy. Yeah. They've found the fisherman's hut and safety. Well done, everybody. Oh, that was tough. Drugsy. You're going to be sick, Daddy. Oh, how come? Oh. What do you think? Oh, this one. This one. I saw. <laughs> I'm seasick. Oh, is that what was happening? Yeah. The waves. Oh. oh. You know I get seasick. You didn't even say you were okay. <laughs> didn't I? Oh, are you okay, Daddy? I didn't know you were seasick. Oh. You get seasick standing on a jetty. I forgot about that. <laughs> Any port in a storm, as the saying goes. But this one has a little bit extra. <gasps> oh my god! You guys! Oh yeah, the love shack, all right. Wow. What a beauty. This is a real fisherman's hut. Oh boys, you're in your element. <laughs> <laughs> Wish I had a set like that. <laughs> oh look! Sink. Is there a beer in the fridge? Oh, no. <laughs> oh beds. Compared to what I've been for, this is like oh, this is is. so cool. Oh. 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 This is absolutely sensational. It's like luxury. It's like a five star hotel. It's better than any five star hotel. It's absolutely beautiful. So, right to be here. <laughs> I think we all need to just really rest and rehydrate because we are all dehydrated. We're sunburnt, we're windburnt. I'm, I physically need to have a rest before I, if I have to do anything physical again, I'm, I must rest first, otherwise I won't survive, I know that. Now that Porter Matthews has found its way to safety, food and water, it's time for Dr. Travis Kemp to return. Travis is home. <laughs> He's come back from running away. <laughs> How are you? Yeah, good. Good. How are you? good to see you. Good to see you. I was sure that you were going to get here. You well? Good afternoon. Hello. Oh, my Fancy dear. Fancy seeing you here. How are we? Very good. How are you? Mm, very good. Well, this is palatial. Isn't it great? Beautiful. How are you feeling generally? Um, pretty tired. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, we're pretty tired and exhausted. Mm. We're happy to be here. Yeah. Okay. So With that's the group buoyed by their success, but emotionally raw from their ordeal, it is the perfect time to take a long, hard look at themselves. Travis immediately plants the seed. First up, boss and Grogan patriarch Ray. And a lot of family businesses want to hand something down to their kids, but find because they haven't spent time handing over the business falls over when they leave. Mm. And I'm just wondering whether that could be a possibility for you, and, unless you start 
really handing over now because it's a four or five year process to do that. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, you've enlightened me to that. I'm, oh, you've made me think about it. You've um, certainly... Does that out. make sense? Yeah, it does, yeah, 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 yeah no, I do, because it, it is a process. And they're not going to necessarily step in and step up um, unless you step back. Does that make sense? Yeah, give them space to grow. For Mum later, the succession plan can't just be about preparing Christy. She also has to prepare herself. But I've got to stop trying to stop her from making those mistakes and allow her. I don't want her to get hurt the way I was hurt. You know what I mean? And I think Christy probably needs to let me go too, which is something she hasn't promised me yet, but she will by the end of the trip. I say, you can let me go too, kid, because she's always super glued to mum's shoulder. So, um, so yeah. I let Christy free to blossom in her own way. So that was Finally, huge. ready to blossom in her own way, it's the heir apparent, Christy. Now, my understanding is that you're coming into the business because you're going to take it over at some point, right? Yes. So tell me how that is when you're working with your mum and dad constantly. With mum and dad, it's good that I know that at the end of the day, I have the backing of them because they know why I'm there and everyone knows why I'm there. Mm -hmm. Michael's never going to be happy with who I am and I just annoy him full stop. So I'm just a bit over that, to be honest. Like, I've tried going out of my way to really be helpful and kind and show that I respect him and stuff, but he doesn't really see it. Because there is middle ground mm -hmm. and the business needs you to find that middle ground for it to be successful. Because the main thing that Ray and Lita want to do is build a business to be able to hand over to their kids, right? Mm. You're one of them. Yeah. That would be devastating to them, that the thought of not being able to hand over the business to their kids. And unless the people in the business now start behaving differently with each other, start being a lot more open and honest with each other and having the tough conversations, mm. they're not going to have a business to hand over. Because it's going to do, do this. So as far as Grogan's are concerned, Christy is the future of Porter Matthews. But Michael isn't convinced. Sure, but if you were recruiting for that position, would you have recruited Christy? Um, I, I would have, I would have, um, I would have talked to Christy and I would have went through the process of interviewing other people and they made an executive decision on that time. That's right. But likely, I didn't get that opportunity for status. And so I don't understand why you didn't have that opportunity if you're a 50% partner. Well, yeah, sometimes I question that myself, but... It's, it's the elephant in the room, isn't it? Well, it's a question in the, it's a question in the business. Who's going to stay, who's going to go, and that's always, you know... And it won't be performance-related. It'll be family-related. Don't know. I'm not too sure yet. <laughs> <laughs> you know exactly yeah. what's going to happen. The thing is, what the family seems to have forgotten oh. is that it's Michael who holds the trump card. I'm a 50% I'm a shareholder within the business and raise my 50% partner. If he wanted to sell his 50% off to his daughter in time, we have set up an agreement that I have first option on that 50%. So if that was the case, I would look at that in the future if I thought that her and I could work together to build the business and maintain the business to the same standard myself and Ray has it. If I didn't think that was possible, I would buy the 50% of the business, or else I would sell the 100% of the business to a, a third party outside. Travis now lays it on the line. Conversation. He and wants Porter Matthews to confront the issue out, that is holding the company back. We've got 24 hours left in this place, and it's a particularly great opportunity to finish things that are unfinished for you. It's only 24 hours left. If there are things unsaid that you want to say, if there's things that you want to try that you haven't tried, if there's uh, conversations that you want to have that you haven't had, this is the opportunity. And I'm going to leave you to have those at your own leisure. But remember that it is only 24 hours to go and you won't have this opportunity again. So that was the Monday night. With just one more day to go, it's the last supper and no prizes for guessing who's about to get crucified. Christy is the first to lay her cards on the table. At the end of the day, this has been a family business that I've been around longer than 
you fall. I've grown up around it and it's okay that I've come into it. I'm not here to threaten anybody. Just so that everyone knows, I want to run that business one day. I mean, obviously you told your parents because you said everyone knows. Yeah. So you need to come to see me and say to me, Michael, this is what I would love to do one day. If I'm capable, if you can get me there, I would love to come on the ride. I would love to be this. I mean, that's what I need to know as a business partner. I didn't know any of this. Second into bat for the Grogans is Ray. What you're talking about here. He's clearly decided that silence is no longer the best policy. You won't put anything in place. You don't want to do it. I've brought it to you and you're the one that doesn't want to make a change or try anything. You are happy in your own little environment doing your own thing. And you will not be able to get involved with any of these guys until we have a plan to be able to move forward. But we do everything together, Ray. Yeah, I know. So it's not me, it's we. Even office pushover Tamika finds the confidence to speak her mind. You don't treat me as an employee. Like, maybe you should tell me off more often. Yeah, I'll try. You know, it's, it's not all about the praise. Like, I, I understand. I'm not, I'm not asking anyone here to say how great I am. I'm just asking for some recognition. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now that the truth is out, it falls to Lita to do a bit of bridge building. After all... Michael is still 50% of Porter Matthews. I think you are a sensational salesperson and I think you're a very sweet and caring person. And you've been out there with that briefcase of yours by, by yourself, nutting your head again against every brick wall to go and get that listing. But you also always ensure that you do go and get for our business, which I'm very, very, very proud of you for doing. And I think that's just so important that the girls know it's a great partnership, but it could just be improved by a better communication within the offers. With the final word, Michael reminds everyone that in the end, it'll be up to him. Because of what's happened down here, because of what's been brought to my attention, hopefully no one takes this personally because it can go either way. It can go forward in a, in a, in a beautiful way it can stay stagnated or it can go back the other way. I'm hoping that it goes forward. Nice logo right? where can mm. deal with I have to think about all this now. I'll go get yeah. a punch off right now. Yeah. I'll give him a hug. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give him a kiss. Can I give him a hug? He doesn't, he's telling me he doesn't like hugging. Oh, I don't. We don't <laughs> The balance is out a little bit in my head and I'm not just going to go with the flow on every idea that's thrown to me unless I think personally it'll help me and the business grow. So maybe it needs to be talked about when I go back when we're off here. No, I, don't I don't do hugging. I'm a terrible hugger. Finally, they're on the home straight. But if Porter Matthews think this last stretch is going to be a walk in the park, they can think again. Their task from here is to move themselves from the fisherman's hut to where the inlet meets the sea. And that's the final point of rescue for this group. That's going to be a very tough bush bash for three or four hours, and it's going to be tough going for people that are very tired. Keep going, keep going, girls, keep get going. through it. Get through it as quickly as you can. After a night of recrimination, revelation and group hugs, have the City Slicker real estate agents finally seen the light? Go forward to Lee Park, keep going. As much as I want to go home, I have loved this experience because I've grown personally. I have honestly developed as a person and I've learnt so much about myself. I should believe in myself. Sometimes I actually am right. I'm right behind you. <laughs> oh, shit! Ooh. I'm really pleased that I've accomplished what we set out to do as a group and that the group has accomplished that as well and we all you know um, are, are very pleased with that result because it was pretty a pretty gr grueling uh, task i'm all right you're all okay being out in that wilderness and water for those days 
I didn't think of anything back home. And I don't even know that I want to go back there. Because there's all that crap that's been left behind. And here I'm out here paddling in this water and I'm free. But that's how I felt. It actually gave me a sense of freedom. When I go back, I'm taking that freedom with me. I do believe that genuine changes have been made within the group and within our relationships. And I hope that our team can move forward. I hope that we're not gonna go back to how it was because then what would be the point of coming out here and experiencing what we've had? Finally, they seem to be acting like a team, communicating well, working together, and looking out for each other to reach their common goal. People have challenged their beliefs about themselves. They've demonstrated that they can do and be in very different ways than what they were back in the business. And now the big opportunity is that they take all of that learning, all of that great activity that they've done together, and transplant it back into their business so their business can be more successful. You made it to where the inlet meets the ocean. <laughs> Fantastic effort. How are you feeling? Worn out. Exhausted. Exhausted, yeah. yeah. It's been a long day. You ready to go home? Yes. yes. <laughs> so let's go. Yay! <laughs> Chrissy has changed her, her, view, her attitude completely in here. I mean, I've seen that with other people, um, how she talks to the people. You know, I think she's, she's, she's kind of grown a little bit by, by the experience. And I think she's got a lot more respect for other employees in here, for sure. And I'm pretty sure Michael realises that it's not a bad thing as such, that my motivation and wanting to sell and wanting to do all these things is actually going to hopefully one day make the business more successful, make more money and hopefully make him more money. So um, I don't think he's as afraid of it as much anymore. Maybe, maybe not. And have so, they finally cleared the air around Christie's future? I spoke to Ray a couple of times about it. Okay. I basically said to him, yes, only if I want, because I've got first choice on the other share of the business. And I said, that might happen one day if her and I can actually have a relationship. But if the relationship's not there, it's not gonna happen. And it was good that I was just bold enough to be able to say that straight to his you know, face. Certainly a, a leader needs to uh, lead by um, example and uh, but at the same time too um, you, you need to bring everyone along with you and um, to help one another on that journey and uh, not to um, maybe well, leave them behind.